The fourth question is from Sohag Ahmed. Sir, please debate with David Woods or say something to him as he says lot of rubbish things about you and other Islamic scholars. This person, Sohag Ahmed and few other Muslim brothers have been continuously asking this question that oh why is Dr. Zakir Naik not debating with David Woods and, and they keep on asking this question several times and I didn't think it was important but now finally I have taken the question to give them the reason. Firstly you have to understand that anyone that challenges a person it's not required that you should accept the challenge. As far as you realize there are many non-Muslims who are becoming famous just by trying to criticize a popular person. Generally, it's a general rule, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, if you criticize a popular personality or a celebrity, that person becomes famous. This is a common thing, it's nothing new. So because of that, David Woods is one of the Christians who has spoken against me and spoken against some of the other Muslim scholars and tries to challenge them why I have not accepted such challenges. The reason is that first of all we should not give publicity to such people. That is the reason I didn't want to answer this question. Then I thought of answering the question without taking the name of David Woods. If you go to David Woods YouTube you find that he has spoken against me and those videos that made against me get views more than a million or close to a million so we are giving him free publicity. There was a time when I was involved in the Dawa in my initial stages in the early 90s and the internet was new in the mid 90s the internet was new and when I went to America in the mid 90s one of the first sites that was against Muslims was answering Islam and the person who used to run this site was Joshin Katz and that time we were new in the field of Dawah and when anyone wrote against Islam I used to go out of the way and reply to them anyone wrote against me I used to reply to them and then I realized the moment we reply to them we have another 10 counter questions so what we realized that my positive work is being stopped if really that question is a logical question or a question that deserves a reply should be replied but these frivolous arguments, at that time when I was new, I told Joshin Katz that okay, do you want to debate with me? You are writing against Islam. He said, do you think I am a fool to debate with Dr. Zakir Naik? That was his reply. So if you see in the initial stages of my dawah in the late 90s, in the early 2000s, I had many debates. And then I realized that debating is not the best, it should be done when required. But better is to talk about, give lectures on similarities between Islam and Christianity, similarities between Islam and Hinduism. But when required, yes. And one of the best debaters in the world, you know, was Sheikh Ahmad Didar. But then we realized that there were people who started challenging me. And one such person was from USA again. I'll tell you his name. Sam Shamoon. Sam Shamoon. And when I went to Chicago, I met him. He said, oh, I want to debate with you. I said, send your guru. And then I had a debate with his guru, Dr. William Campbell. And when I accepted this debate, I was called by the students of USA that Dr. William Campbell wrote a book, Quran and Bible in the Light of Science. And he took out about 30 scientific errors in the Quran. And for eight years, no Muslim replied. So this book was doing a great damage for the Dawah of the Muslims. And no one replied, so I took up the challenge, I read the book and I went and I debated with it. And Alhamdulillah, in Chicago, there were two groups among the Muslims. One group was against the debate, what is this? No one replied and now the Zakir, who is this young man coming from India, how will he reply? So half the Muslims were against the debate and half the Muslims were for. Alhamdulillah, the debate took place in Chicago and Allah's help was there, Allah's mercy was there and it was a very successful debate. So much so that after that, Alhamdulillah, William Campbell who got a doctorate in writing a book against Islam, mashallah, it lost its popularity. Later on then I made a policy that after my video started becoming popular then I had a rule. I will only debate with those people who are popular. Then we realized that those people who are not popular started challenging to become popular. And I will give you a very good example. You know Sheikh Ahmed Didad, he debated with Jimmy Swagat. 
And Jimmy Swagger at that time was one of the most popular televangelists. He was multiple times more popular than Sheikh Ahmed Didar. Many people told him, don't go, he will chew you and spit you. But Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Ahmed Didar had the help of Allah and he gave a knockout to Jimmy Swagat. We have another example, he debated with Anis Surosh. Anis Surosh wasn't known at all. But when Anis Surosh debated with Sheikh Ahmed Didar, Ahmed Didar, Alhamdulillah, won him lock, stock and barrel, but Anis Surosh became popular. So what we realize that when you debate with someone who's popular and an unpopular person debates with a popular person, the unpopular person becomes famous overnight. So why should we make the unpopular Christian missionaries as popular? So then I had a policy that anyone who wants to debate with me should minimum have at least 2% of the audience that I have in my largest gathering. And earlier I said that Anyone who can gather 10,000 people, individuals for a lecture, I will debate him. After that, there was a middle person who requested him to debate with Shishi Ravi Shankar. And you know Shishi Ravi Shankar is one of the most famous Hindu preachers in the world. One of the most. It comes in number one, two and three. And he has a large following. He has an audience of 20,000, 50,000, alhamdulillah. I accepted the challenge. And we had a debate in the year 2006, in January, in his hometown, Bangalore. And Allah's help was there. It was a very successful debate. The topic was concept of God in Hinduism and Islam in the light of sacred scriptures. Since 2006, there are many people who challenge me for a debate. And when anyone challenges me, I say that I don't waste my time. There are hundreds of people who address large audiences. They are very popular and my largest gathering that I have given a lecture is previously was in Kerala, then it was in Kishan Ganj, Bihar where more than a million people attended. So 2% of a million is 20,000. So my criteria was I would not mind debating any non-Muslim on any topic of comparative religion as long as he can gather minimum 20,000 people for his live lecture, not a conference. In conferences, there are 20, 30 speakers. They might not have come for him particularly. So if a person gives a solo lecture and if he can get audience of 20,000 people live, not on the YouTube, not on the Facebook, 20,000 live sitting, then I don't mind debating him. And what I'm asking is not something which is difficult. There are hundreds of Hindu preachers in India who have audience in more than 20,000. There are hundreds of Christian missionaries who have audience in more than 20,000. So I tell if people like Sam Shamoon or people like David Woods want to have a debate, let them become popular. Why do they want to ride on my bandwagon? And if you can't get that gathering, only thing you have to do is convince with your material any other Christian preacher. There are many. Franklin Graham is there, Billy Graham is there, Maurice Sorolo is there. There are many. There are hundred speakers that I know in Christianity who have given live lectures to more than 20,000 people. What you have to do is catch one of them and convince them that your material against me is logical and give it to them. I will have a debate with them. Why should I make you famous overnight? I heard one or two of his videos that Zakir and Nike is a joke. It is. What he's talking is rubbish. But the moment I reply to him, he becomes famous. That's the reason I was avoiding handling this question because now the moment I take the name of David Woods, most of the people hearing me tonight may not be aware of David Woods. A small percentage maybe. They will go and check. He will become famous. And let me tell you, there are many other people. There was a dai by the name of Muhammad Hijab. And he came to meet me in Malaysia last year. And he's a fan of mine. He's a good guy. He personally had a debate with David Woods. I have not seen the video. I was supposed to watch. But some of my colleagues saw it. And they told that Brother Muhammad Hijab, he gave David Woods a knockout. So when others can do the job, why should I waste my time? That's the reason previously we used to reply on the internet. Now we don't. Because the moment you reply, they'll give a counter reply. And your work of positive dawah suffers. 
So that's the reason anyone who wants to debate me, this criteria is there. Give it to a celebrity, give it to a famous personality, he will not be a fool to debate with me. Today, if someone gives a million dollar to Shishi Ravi Shankar, he will never agree to have a debate with me again. He knows that. Even if you give two million dollars to him, he will not. Because he's a celebrity. He will lose his following. And he already lost many, many people in that debate who are his followers who called him God. They accepted Islam. So that's the reason I require David Wood to convince any of these hundred Christian missionaries who are popular, who can have audience of more than 20, so convince them. If he cannot convince them, why does he want to have a debate with them? When he cannot convince his own Christian brother that the material of his is enough to answer my lectures, why is he wasting his time? These people are only riding on the popularity of other people. Otherwise, he is unknown. And I request the Muslim brothers, please don't waste your time. Please don't waste your time. The person who asked me this question should have, in fact, known that Brother Muhammad Hijab, he had a debate with him and I already answered him. So why should you make David Wood popular? So hope this answers the question. And because I made this criteria since 2006, in the last 14 years, no one has ever wanted to debate me. One of the fans of Sadhguru told me, will you debate Sadhguru? And Sadhguru is a popular person, is not as popular as Shishi Ravi Shankar, but he's popular. I told, okay, I accept it, I know he's popular. Okay, if he wants to debate with me, I'm not interested in debating him. He wants to debate, he wants to speak against Islam, wants to challenge me, I'll accept it. Because if he challenges me, and if Allah's help is there, and we present the truth, and answer to all his illogical arguments, but naturally he will lose his following. So if people like Sadhguru or someone who is popular want to challenge on any topic of Islam and comparative religion which I deal with, I accept the challenge. Hope that answers the question.